Warning. Listening to this show may result in increased levels of inspiration, motivation, and innovation. Side effects can include the immediate urge to take massive action to build a better business and life for yourself and others. You've been warned. Welcome to Influencers Radio with your host, Jack Mize. Uh, welcome back to another episode of Influencers Radio. Uh, you know, Inc. Magazine uh, ran an article and I was reading entitled The Psychological Price of Entrepreneurship. And it talked about how successful entrepreneurs, uh, you know, achieve hero status in our culture. We idolize guys like Mark Zuckerberg and the, the Elon Musk, and we celebrate the, the meteoric growth of startups. But the fact is, there are a lot of psychological battle scars that come with this kind of success. And my guest today has incredible insight when it comes to facing what he refers to as panic, pressure, and pain uh, that so often accompanies success. And to endure that panic, pressure, and pain and rise to uh, the elite level as a champion uh, male entrepreneur, he says you must go to war to fight to become the person that you were meant to to be. Now, in the world of uh, men's personal development, Victor Bell Jr. is considered the secret weapon to elite male entrepreneurs when it comes to winning the success war. Uh, he's the, the founder of the Champion Program for Male Entrepreneurs and the author of 30 Days of War, a battle plan for winning it all in marriage business and life and becoming the man you deserve to be. So please welcome to Influencers Radio, Victor Bell Jr. Welcome to the show, Victor. Hey, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Well, I appreciate you being here. You know, um, that uh, Inc. Uh, magazine article that I mentioned, there was a quote from uh, the CEO of Insight Solutions, Toby Thomas, and he says, uh, and I'll quote, it's like a man riding a lion. People think, you know, this guy is brave and he's thinking, how the hell did I get on the lion and how do I keep from getting eaten? Uh, to me, you know, that seems to be the perfect analogy for what we're talking about today. You know, I've never heard it really put uh, so concisely and on point, but there are a lot of entrepreneurs out there that to the rest of the world uh, appear to have it all. You know, they've reached the mountaintop. But the reality is they are experiencing that, that panic, pressure, and pain uh, that you and the, the men that you work with are all too familiar with. So let's start out with the big one. How would you describe uh, you know, that panic, pressure, pain that they're going through? Definitely. You know, uh, a lot of that... Um, is really them trying to juggle all of it, you know, juggle the business. And, and typically I work with married uh, male entrepreneurs and businessmen. So these guys are middle-aged guys. They put a lot of time and energy into growing something that matters to them, you know, and now they have all the emotions that go along with that, as well as being married and keeping their marriage and their home life together, as well as being a dad and a good father and trying to balance all of these things as well as sometimes having a staff or, you know, if they're investors, they got tenants and there's a lot of things, a lot of things going on at one time for them. And to be able to deal with all that, as well as keep yourself together, some of those things start to slip. And these guys, when they have a downturn, they forget who they are. They forget why they even got into this thing in the first place sometimes because, you know, between divorce and uh, bankruptcy, all these things are involved in these guys' day-to-day -day conversations, as well as going to the next level of play for them. So that can be tough. Um, you know, and if you hit a lull or if you even become stagnant, you can lose everything. You have a lot riding on your ability to continue to move through those, you know, we, that, that panic pressure and the pain of either growth or even sustaining where you're at. Yeah, I guess that's just the physics of success, right? If you have a lot, then you have a lot to lose. And, <laughs> and, and that seems to be what a lot of people miss when they see these people from the outside, when they're looking at, oh, what a lucky guy. Look at everything he has in reality in his mind it's like you know look at everything i have to lose and uh it seems to be an elusive um you know that elusive prize to to be able to have all that uh, just like in the areas that you talk about in business in marriage in life that it does seem you know that that word balance it seems like 
that when you know you get something optimal in one area, then you're sacrificing or neglecting the other. Is 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 there in reality a a a true balance that can be had there? No. <laughs> There's integration. I mean, like I think uh a couple of different people have said a lot of entrepreneurs, especially at the highest level, like, well, you know, there's no real balance, but there is integration. I can integrate my life with my business because my business has become my life. My marriage and all the people that I involve myself in with have to really be on board with this because this is what we do. This is who we become over time. And it's what we've strived for from start to finish. We don't even know how to do other things. Um, when I say do other things, like the understanding of how the rest of the world works, um, is elusive to us because we just see the world we see. We create, we build, uh, we go out to look to succeed as well as keep the house of cards stacked together with marriage, business, and family, and kids, as well as maintain ourselves and our own mentality and, and, and not lose um, what we've built amongst ourselves as guys, as men. Um, well, I, so, think, yeah. I think you, you just... <laughs> Uh, probably created a huge shift in a lot of guys' minds that that, that, that they can now stop the, the, the hunt for the unicorn, right? <laughs> if there is no balance. Um, right. So would you describe, you say integration, uh, I guess that leads to my next question. How would you define a champion that somebody that is a champion, um, you know, man, male entrepreneur, whether that be in the personal or business side or, or, or both, is it that person that successfully finds th- that integration? Uh, you know, for us, the way that I describe champion men is usually the guy that's, uh, I always say he's a lot more hard charging, you know, like myself, I was an entrepreneur, I was a soldier, I'm an athlete. Um, all of those different things define who I am as a comp, as a, as a makeup of a personality trait that I have more of a warrior type guy. Like I run into the fight, not away from it. Like I'm willing to step out and risk those things. And my threshold for pain is a lot higher than the average person where I don't run away from some challenge. Um, that's how typically we define it as champion men and champion male entrepreneurs are just business men that have that mentality. Um, as it relates to the business in both side of life, we call that winning at all. Or, or when we talk about our champion standard of winning at all, winning at all in our lives means that we are now able to operate on all fronts. So now not only am I the type of person that I am moving into the space that I want to be into as it relates to business and entrepreneurship, I can also be a great dad. I can also be a great husband. I can also hold it all together as it relates to being a man of God and doing the things that I believe that I'm called to do and guided on and serving the purpose and mission that I have, as well as sustain a multi-million dollar business and uh, be a good leader in the people um, that I've actually believed that I've been called to lead. And that comes off the heels of recognizing that as a kid and also as a youth or, or growing up and easy, you know, even as a man, um, the world tells us otherwise that we should tone it down not do this, not do that. We all have AT, ADD, PTSD. We're all bipolar because we have all these different things going on because we won't just accept status quo. So describing champion men and then describing a champion businessman or a champion male entrepreneur in the world is somebody who's actually gone against the grain and been able to actually win it all in all of our areas of life, not just in one or two where I can be successful in business, but a failure as a husband or successful in business and a failure as a father or worse successful as a husband and a father, but then a huge failure in business where I can't sustain the ship. Um, so that's not really a balance per se, but we like to say that's how we win it all in the way that we play the game here in champion as men. Well, I think the language you use, I think people have already figured out that that it, it, it with the warrior, you know, it's it's aggressive. I I, I guess the, the the term docile probably isn't applied to you very often. Uh, no, <laughs> and 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 it kind of takes me back to your, your book, the Thirty Days of War. Um, In the description of your book, you say that before you can dominate in the game of business life relationships, you must win the battle against your toughest opponent, yourself. Now, I'm sure that's an eye opening statement for a lot of uh, a lot of men. Right. Um, It is because, you know, especially. You know, like we said before, coming from the background of myself, you know, as an athlete and soldier, um, then moving into the entrepreneur space when I became a real estate investor with my backdrop and all those things, um, 
when you get into a different world, like it's usually about, hey, settle down. It's not always about winning. Business is usually about win-win and let's, you know, tone things down. This isn't how things are done. So there's a lot of limitations on those things and it can become confusing as it relates to being able to be who you have to be to be successful in business and also be successful sometimes in marriage or be successful as who we've been brought up to think what it means to be a man as a father or anything like that. So in order for us to even succeed in the game of business and life and relationship, a lot of times we got to get a handle on ourselves and who we are. So it helps build us so we don't all of a sudden feel conflicted in what it is that we want versus what it is that we've been taught or socialized to think uh, moving into the way things work today. Well, you know, is you have a background in working with uh, uh, several uh, uh, people, fighters in the MMA, boxing, and you actually use uh, that as a, as a metaphor and, and analogies and, uh, in your book. So using the ring as that metaphor, would you say that a lot of successful entrepreneurs, they, they, they reach that point where they find themselves in the ring and there's no opponent? On the other side, that, that they have to finally realize that, you know, they're, they're the one, when you say they're their toughest opponent, um, what is it? I think that shifts from a physical, I guess, um, challenge to a mental challenge, right? It definitely is. Um, you know, usually our toughest opponent is ourselves. You know, we, with the extreme highs and lows of men like us that we do have, like we're way up or we're way down. Um, you know, we're extremely emotional or we're absolutely not emotional at all. Um, and we took a look at, and I take a look at that, you know, even from a fighter aspect, you're getting in the ring or you're getting in the cage and there's nobody standing across from you um, as opposed to life. The only person that we tend to deal with, we're our harshest critic. Um, and we also pat ourselves on the back the most. Um, but primarily most of the guys that I know, um, that are really pushing and are really playing at the highest level in life. We're so critical on ourselves. So some of the biggest obstacles and the biggest opponents that we'll ever face are ourselves. When we feel like doing something or don't feel like doing something, when we're having challenges and we don't want to face the world, we still got to get up and show up every day and keep the veil on. And that's tough. Without having the ability to overcome those obstacles of really being who you have to be to show up every day to continue on to make that fight so you can be successful for yourself and other people um, without having the ability to face that fight every day, everyone loses, not just you. So yes, your biggest opponent is always going to be yourself when you step onto the battlefield of your life every day into the ring of your life. And that's what 30 days of war. I try to cover that quite a bit and use that as an analogy um, because it's rarely ever discussed that way ever. You know, a core message of yours is is about accountability and, and taking responsibility for the things that happen in your life, whether it be the good, the bad, the ugly. How important is that to to moving to that next level of success? Uh, definitely. You know, um, that's one of the things that we discuss also uh, in 30 Days of War is that declare war daily and telling the truth like the biggest shifts for all of the guys that come into champion. And it isn't that they lie to themselves, but they accept anything less than the thing that they want, because that is truly the truth. Like if things aren't well for you, you have to start telling the truth. You have to decide once and for all that this is the war that you're going to fight. It's to not lie to yourself and tell yourself that things were okay when they're really not. Um, and accept whatever that is. I don't see it as a result thing. I see it as an outcome. Like, you're overweight. That's an outcome of the actions that you took. If you aren't successful in, let's say, you know, getting more property, getting more business, getting more clients, you know, taking your business to the next level, it's an outcome of the actions that you took or didn't take. That is your truth. And in order, once you decide to accept those things and, and really become accountable for where you are and take full responsibility, you can begin to change them. If you don't see them again as bad and beat yourself up over them again, it goes right back to being the worst opponent as well as taking 100% accountability, accountability and responsibility for where you sit. Uh, a lot of men fail there. That's a tough pill to swallow when uh, you're up against the world as it relates to some of my guys and what they say. You know, you brought up a, a, a really good point that I want to make sure that we, uh, that we uh, follow up on here, and that is, uh, you know, when you talk about going to, to battle, to fight, to be the man that you are meant to be for, for the success, uh, um, you know, the, that you want, the success that you deserve, you stress, and you just mentioned it, um, 
in that answer before is that you stressed in order to be successful in this war, you first need to clearly understand what it is that you really want and why that uh, you know why you want it, and I think that, uh, and I and I want to put an extra emphasis on understanding what you really want. Uh, I imagine that that exercise leads to some important self discovery for a lot of guys. It really does. Um, you know, it's one of the things that we share. It's like you know, well, look. So I mean, if you took a look around, like, what is it that you want? Do you have the marriage that you want? Do you drive the car you want? Is it the house that you want? Are your kids and you connecting the way you really want? Are you actually running the business the way you want? Is it operating the way you want? Is it really what you want? You know, when I ask guys that question and I go, and don't lie, there's always this little bit about where they are. This little, I call it the inch that makes the mile of discontent for where they sit. And then they start looking at, taking a look around at life and go, you know, is good the new bad for you because it could be excellent if you just make the choice, but it starts with you maybe telling yourself the truth about what's not working. And once you do that, you're able to kind of move the needle as well as share with other people where things may need to be in the, and some of the work that needs to be involved in those things. And that's what we help support guys on it because that's not really a level of work or what they know how to do or not know how to do, but it's accepting where they are, deciding truly what they want and then being around a group of men that are going to hold them to, the accountability towards the actions that it takes to get those things. And I think that's huge um, for any champion minded man, because that fight by themselves, fighting themselves all the time, and then having someone question what's going on in their lives. Like, is this good? Is this what you really want, man? Um, really calls them, you know, it calls them to kind of pause for a second and go, you don't know, no, it's not. I've accepted this and I've settled towards this, but this isn't really what I want. Here's what I want. And that's got to be a huge relief. And, and, and I guess that's, you know, when I say self-discovery to find out, you know, to have that moment of, you know, I've been fighting so hard for something and, and I really don't want that. And maybe that's why I'm not getting it. And I guess uh, they're, at that point, what, they're, they're able to refocus their, their, their energy or refocus that battle on what they, they really want. Yes, definitely. Definitely. Um, you, you said something a moment ago about how guys are their... Um, can be their harshest critics, uh, but also be the ones to, to, to pat themselves on the back. Now, a common school of thought in the personal development world is that you have to love yourself uh, before you can love others or, or let others love you. However, the term no love wage war is almost a mantra of sorts uh, for you. It's it's throughout the, the, the book, The 30 Days of War. Uh, what is the meaning behind that? No love. Well, you know, because I always see like we only have a few emotions. I mean, when it's really put onto paper, aside from everyone's like, I mean, you know, I'm, I have anxiety. I'm depressed. Really, you know, I boil it all down into happy, sad, you know, love, um, anger, things like that. And when I really took a look at that, I'm like, man, you know, your emotions really can rule your mind if you're not careful. So. Well, like I tell my guys, like once you begin to love that side of you that says, I don't feel like it today, um, I don't feel like doing this or man, I'm just super depressed. All this stuff is boiling, you know, over and I really have to deal with it. I don't feel like doing anything. And I always tell them, like, you know, once you let your your emotions run you, your emotions make you weak and your mind goes into like this sleep mode where you can't even get up and do it. So until you decide once and for all that your mind is stronger than your emotion, that you can tell yourself to do something and not utilize or have to utilize the emotions that go along with it because your emotions can trick you and fool you into believing that you're okay. You know, um, I love my wife and I love my children, but there may be some things that I personally need to do that may help our relationship be better. But if I just take my love as sheer where things are in my emotional standpoint, then my mind may not say, hey, Vic, um, don't do anything with your boys today. Or, hey, Vic, maybe tonight's not a good night for you to take your wife out to dinner because you love her already and she's fine. Um, <laughs> I guess it's almost the, the, the way that uh, I think about the, the term enabler and enabler when someone yeah, they yeah. love someone so much that they enable them to continue to to um, I guess be self destructive or continue to do things that aren't good good for them because they don't want to um, 
you know, be abrasive to them, like, you know, a mother would to a child, oh, that's okay, you know, and, and I guess provide excuses, right? Is that what love is? Don't, don't, to avoid providing excuses for yeah, that's yourself? Exactly, what it is. exactly. Like, don't, don't allow your emotions to, or the love of something to make you or allow you to let the excuse of doing nothing about it affect the actions that you have to do. That's really what it is. It really was. Yeah, I, 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 that's, a, that's a very strong concept because I think a lot of people can see it from that that aspect of an enabler, someone enabling someone else, but probably don't realize how much we do it to ourselves um, yes. oftentimes. Uh, you know, one of the traps that you warn against is settling for less than you deserve. And I see that as a, a I guess what, what you definitely find is to be a common trait to, uh, um, you know, to champions is, is that they don't settle. Uh, you know, what would be an example and the consequences of this, uh, a real life example and consequences of someone that, uh, that settles? Um, they have a retreat. Someone that says, hey, look, I want this. And then when they don't get it, they're like, well, it's OK. You know, um, maybe that wasn't for me or or maybe I was, I didn't really deserve it or maybe something went wrong. You know, you know, I, I've shared it before. It was like that death ground concept of putting yourself in a situation where you can't settle, like putting yourself in a situation like we said in the book, you know, setting up camp with your back against the mountain to whereas if you go for something, there is no turning around for you. You can't settle for any less than what you are gunning for, be it in your business, in your relationship, in the things that you want, um, your spiritual walk with your body. All of those things come about, um, especially when you have no retreat, when you have to go get those things done or you put yourself in a situation where you've decided that you won't settle for anything less than what you've chosen. And then also, like we said, that death ground also has a, um, a heavy association with surrounding yourself with people who won't also let you settle for any less than what you said that you wanted to. Um, so that's another way of, of providing that. It's, it's kind of like the concept of the, uh, the burning the bridges behind you, right? To, to, so that you can't, you, you can't go back. And, and when you do that, there's obviously some people that around you that say, Hey, what are you nuts? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. It scares other people. Like I said, but that's, you know, that, that's, that's champion men. Like, you know, we tend to scare people because we do sever, sever the retreat. Like I said, you burn the boats, you burn the bridge behind you. And like you turn around and, and you let people know, like, look, this is where we're going. We're forging forward. Um, there is no other way. And that makes a lot of people nervous, but that's truly what it takes to move to the higher level of life or the higher level of play, no matter what you're doing and being the person that you have to be, um, well, doing those things start defining who you have to be. You begin to sever ties and you can't go back to being the other person who settled once you kind of make that a potential practice. Well, I think it's one of the the, 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 the facts of, of success or t- transformation that I've seen in a lot of the people that I've seen that have uh, had some remarkable set, success in the transformation. And it seems that as much as we strive for success – and the uh, the happiness that that goes along with it that it can bring to ourselves, our families, um, it can also breed contempt and envy, uh, and often from the people that we care deeply about. Uh, how do you know we deal with this difficult situation? Wow! Uh, surround yourself with people who celebrate you. <laughs> I know that sounds simplistic in nature, but like everyone's not going to be happy for you when you move forward. I mean, yeah, it definitely can make people upset, you know, and I've always found the same thing typically, which is why most champion men that I find are alone a lot. You know, we, we, you know, as entrepreneurs and businessmen, uh, we tend to surround ourselves with people who understand us. And when people don't understand us, we go to the next level of being alone of that where no one understands us. But like one of the things that I always tell my guys, Surround yourself with people who will celebrate you, not to, not just settle for who you are at the lowest level, you know, because that's typically what happens. People who settle for you at the lowest level uh, tend to not celebrate your success when you go up a notch because that means you have to leave them behind. Um, and you have to also be willing to do that as well. And I guess that goes back to the uh, what's the 
the saying that that you you are the um, what is it? You you, you are equal to the, the 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 five people you hang out with the most, or you know something like that. I'm paraphrasing. I guess yeah. that goes kind of goes back to that principle that in order to to grow and, and move that next level, you may not be able to hang out with some of those five people that that won't be willing to grow with you. Right. It's what we say in champion. You're the sum total of your thoughts plus your, well, you're the sum total of the five friends you keep minus the actions you take. Um, a lot of guys hang around with people and they may be this, they may be equal to those people, less the actions they take. You can hang around with a bunch of successful people, but if you aren't taking the actions of the people you hang around with, you're not at that level. You're just hanging around. Um, you know, we have a lot of those guys as well. So yeah, it definitely is within the lines of what you're saying. It's like surrounding yourself with successful people, but there's also that level of guys who do that, that are just kind of moochers that hang around to just hang around, but they aren't really adding any value. Um, so that's, that's one of those deals that I told my, you know, all of us to be aware of, which is why it's a requirement of all the men in champion to be contributors to what it is that we're doing. We're all moving in the same direction. But if you aren't going to take the actions that it takes, you just want to talk a good game, then at some point you aren't going to be a part of where we're headed and we're going to have to leave you behind as well. You know, one of the uh, the things that uh, strikes me as I was going through the uh, 30 days of war is that, um, and this goes back to the accountability and, and, and a lot of the things that we've been talking about, is that, uh, you know, it's, it's broken up into 30 days. I guess the book is a, what people would typically think of as chapters. It's broken up to 30 days with uh, a different message or a different battle, I guess, if, if you will. And yes. at the end of each one of these days is a um, an accountability. I believe you call it the, uh, the daily commitment to action. Mm-hmm. And so uh, what I was getting at is, is it, it strikes me that uh, you are actually – uh, you're helping guys to achieve incremental levels of success along the way because, uh, you know, at each one of these days, they have to, I guess, recognize um, the successes that they have in that incremental, you know, on an incremental basis, but also they have to reflect on, uh, you know, the consequences if they don't apply the, 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 the principles. And a lot of people uh, think of success as a finite journey, you know, that it's really a, a a culmination that that you know there's a day that you reach the top of the mountain and that's when it's time to celebrate uh however you caution guys against getting comfortable uh when they start to uh to feel that way can you kind of talk a little bit about the the, the incremental successes of why it's important to you know on a daily or at least on a on a scheduled basis to reflect on your your wins your you, you know the 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 battles that you face, the consequences that you'll face if you don't apply certain actions and also, you know, the dangers of getting comfortable when you do finally get to what people see as that, that mountaintop. Yes. You know, and, and we talk about that in, in, in about staying hungry. You know, one of the biggest lessons that you know, I find all champion men end up finding out is they get to a certain point and then they kind of taper off and they start getting comfortable. And I tell them, man, you just, you stop being hungry. You stop fighting. And like, there's this, you know, we like to say this, this, um, constructive dissatisfaction. It doesn't mean that we aren't satisfied, but it's like this constructive constant drive to be better to constantly move the needle a little bit further. And when those guys lose that, that's typically when the house of cards comes tumbling, tumbling down for them because what made them who they are is their ability to stay ahead. It, it keeps them going. It keeps them successful. It keeps them moving um, in all fronts. And once they stop, um, you know, their world can come crumbling down pretty quickly because they have the ability to climb so high so fast that the fall for a guy that moves that quickly is greater. And when they lose that hunger, they stop being that way. Um, they... I mean, you could, they can turn into an emotional wreck um, with all the things that they have to juggle. And when they're responsible at that level, it's tough. So I always share with the guys, look, stay hungry, stay on top of your game, stay moving. Just because you had some incremental success doesn't mean that's the end game. That is just a part of the game. And it is our responsibility. It's really our right um, to continue on with those things because of the position that we've put ourselves in to be able to do those things. So, yeah, definitely. Um 
it's not a finite journey. It, it becomes one of those deals where it's a constant evolution of who we are as men. Uh, you know, w- 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 let's go back a little bit to the, the, the panic uh, uh, pressure and pain. You've worked with some people that have been in some very precarious positions. You've worked with people that have been what most would see as insurmountable obstacles uh, that I think people just don't realize. And and you haven't been able to help them because you just had a notion one day of what might work. Uh, obviously, you, you've, you've obviously experienced and, and been through the, the, the panic, pressure, pain uh, yourself. What is it that led you to to, to create the, the champion program, to, to create the, the 30 days of war and to, to share these principles that uh, that have helped so many? Uh, I would say about two, 2007, 2008, I had my own downturn. I, I was a real estate investor um, and I went bankrupt. So I found myself stressed out because I had lost my own personal drive. Like I took my eye off the ball. I started paying attention a lot to a lot of things that I shouldn't have. Um, I had I just, just it all seemed like it happened in one day that everything that I had built, my whole real estate empire was gone. And I've shared it before. I found myself sitting at the beach saying, man, you know what, God, I did everything right. Or at least I thought that I did. And what I found was when I really took a look at all those things that I had really became something that uh, I share with the guys that I, I lost that edge. I lost my drive. I lost my, you know, I took my eyes off the ball. And that meant that my business had done what it was doing. My relationship was tarnished. You know, between my wife, like I wasn't doing the things I needed to be doing, like with my son and my wife was pregnant with my twins. Like I had to get it all back or give it all up. And um, yeah, like I made the choice, like, you know what? I was going to go back. I was going to put my nose to the grindstone. I was going to work and I was going to get it all back. And I was going to not just win in business, but I was going to win it all. I was going to turn all of it around. And that led me on the journey that I've been on, like, you know, so far as reading books and learning and hiring coaches and masterminds and joining all these different programs to rebuild who I really was. And I put it all together. And that's how Champion came about. Um, For a long time, it was just me doing this stuff. It wasn't some fancy program. It wasn't fancy marketing. It was really me going out and rebuilding who I was at the core and finally being myself and no longer hiding. So... I guess that goes back to the, the you know when we said at the top of the show that when you have a lot you have a lot to lose and I guess you experienced that. Yeah, I was riding the tiger big time, um, <laughs> <laughs> and to the outside looking in, everyone was like, "Wow, you're great!" And like to my you know to my lo and behold, my shame to have to go back to you know my peers and be like, "Hey, I lost. Um, we lost everything," you know, and then to even believe that, you know, my peer group that I surrounded myself with, like that they were going to be there for me. Like, you know, uh, they weren't, you know, it was something I had to do by myself, you know, which led me to say, Hey, you know, there are other men out there that are like me that question who they are that are trapped in this juggle of life, trying to be a father and a husband now, and then also run this business or rebuild the house of cards after it's all fallen down. Um, and who am I now? And uh, why do I have these feelings? Why do I feel this way? Why am I struggling? What is it that I need to do to really push myself past the level? I didn't want to go to another seminar or a personal development training camp, you know, standing next to somebody's grandmother. Um, you know, I had real problems in my mind. There were very few people like me in the places that I did go to where people like me. They weren't having the conversations that we were we are willing to have and champion because those conversations are so taboo. So out of the necessity of having no place to go for myself, being the type of person that I was, um, did champion come into play um, inside of the inner workings of the facility that we had also created in Warhorse. And then that's what led me also with the 30 days of war. Like I believe at some point I was again sitting down in church and I was like, you know, what was the guide? What is it that I can say to somebody over this timeline towards they can take a look at their life and say, you know what, if I said this to me every day, if I was aware every day, or if there was something that could be said and I had something measurable that I can sit down and I can say, look, if I take this conversation in my mind, I take these actions based on those conversations as it relates to me and the things outside of me. Um, and I start actively taking a look at where I am today, where I will be later, where I will be if I don't do something, or if I do do something, where am I going to be at? 
and then take steps on those things every day, which is, you know, now became the 30 days of war. So they were all really based on my own personal journey um, to rebuild who I am. Well, so, I, I think everyone can agree that, you know, there's, there's probably no better coach, no better guide than somebody that has been through the war and has brought back a map. And and that's certainly, you know, seems to be what you have done and, and, and how you've helped uh, so many people that have been in these this situation. I think that's, uh, you know, the book, 30 Days of War, you know, it, it really does. You, you strip it down to the core. It, you know, I'm looking at the description right now. Over the next 30 days, uh, Victor Bell Jr. will challenge, motivate, and inspire you to wage war against the enemy within so you can become the man you deserve to be. And I think you've you've done a great service to a lot of folks for, for stripping it down to that core and to to make a, 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 these simple steps that they can do on a, on a daily basis. How can we find out more about uh, the, the Champion program or to uh, uh, grab a copy of uh, the 30 Days of War book? Um, as it relates to Champion, uh, you can go to the championarmy.com. That's championarmy.com. You can check us out there. Um, there's like a free video uh, series that you can watch. Kind of gives a little bit more description of what that is and how to be involved in that. Um, as it relates to 30 Days of War, feel free. Uh, like I said, I would love to have you know anybody listening. I, you know, I, I really appreciate it. I think it's going to really benefit you. Um, you can go to Amazon.com or your local real um, retailer, a book retailer like Orders or anything like that. And if they don't have it, um, they can definitely order it for you. All right. Well, fantastic. Victor, I have to say that, you know, it's it's always uh, enlightening uh, uh, talking with you and, and, you know, the things that you've seen and, and especially the, the types of uh, clients that you've worked with and, and the descriptions of of what you've been through and what they've been through. It's just, just really fascinating. I see why you are the secret weapon, because I don't think a lot of people who want to get out and do testimonials about some of the things that they've been through that you've helped them work through. So I certainly understand why you are the secret weapon uh, to a lot of these um, uh, elite entrepreneurs. So thank you so much for coming on to Influencers Radio uh, today and, and you know sharing this with us. And um, I think there's a lot of people that, uh, didn't recognize what was going on in their head and, and oftentimes they feel alone because there aren't a lot of people around them in their same situation. I think um, just knowing that there's uh, someone that uh, understands what they're going through and also understands what needs to be done to get through it um, is definitely a life changer and I think sometimes probably even a life saver. So, so thank you so much for, for being on today. Thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it. All right, folks, there you have it. Uh, Victor Bell Jr., check it out, 30 Days of War. Um, like I said, you can find it on Amazon.com, uh, Kindle, and also uh, paperback. Or you can check with your uh, local book retailer, and uh, if they don't have it, they can order it for you. And definitely check out the Champion army.com we'll have those links on the show post and until next time on influencers radio remember you are the only real game changer you've been listening to influencers radio to get all past shows and updates on future shows visit influencersradio.com today or follow us on facebook at facebook.com slash influencers radio